Love or hate Ratchet & Clank 3, anybody playing it could clearly see that the game had shifted its priorities away from complex platforming stages towards more shooter-focused gameplay. With its linear, straightforward levels, territory, control warfare missions, and online deathmatch multiplayer. One of the problems with Ratchet 3 is that it feels caught between trying to be a planet-hopping adventure like the first two titles, while also embracing more linear, adrenaline-filled maps and horde mode battlegrounds that would feel more at home in a six-hour first-person shooter campaign rather than a 3D platformer. Content feels thinly spread and unpolished. The adventure-style platforming levels are barren and unrefined, and the more shooter-heavy moments come across as awkward pacebreakers to a platformer with a bit of an identity crisis. A year after Ratchet 3, though, Insomniac decided to put the focus squarely on the third-person shooter elements of Ratchet to create a fast-paced action game with the emphasis almost entirely on the combat. And the outcome is a much more confident, polished, and tight experience known as Ratchet Deadlocked. <laughs> Ratchet and Clank are kidnapped and forced to partake in Dread Zone, an illegal combat sport where heroes are forced to compete in Mortal Kombat for the entertainment of trillions. Ratchet is a blip on the radar to those in charge and is thrown in at the bottom of the ranks as presumed cannon fodder, casting the player as the underdog and taunting them to climb the leaderboard and prove the organizers wrong. Oh, here he is. <laughs> He's a little guy, isn't he? Well, don't bother getting up for drinks, folks. This guy won't last two rounds. We'll see. Oh yeah, by the way, the HD version of this game you can get on the PlayStation Store? Not the greatest. Each level is contextualized as another episode of Dread Zone, structured with very rigid missions and objectives. Reach the place, blow up thing, defend the thing, survive an onslaught, etc. It's a far cry from the first two Ratchet games and might put people who are really into those titles off with its rigidity, but I don't understand why anybody would say Love 3 and then throw Deadlocked under the bus. After all, the structure is very similar. You go to a linear level, complete some objectives, and then do a bunch of extra mission-based activities, like a lot of major planets in 3. Only now, the combat is more refined, the presentation is tighter, and the non-stop shooting action is backed up by fitting context and style. Ratchet 3 was kinda designed to be played with a dual analog stick setup, you know, where you move with one stick and aim with the other. But Insomniac chickened out of including it as the default control scheme, probably leading a lot of people to be oblivious to its inclusion and to just play with the less precise auto-aim of the first two games. Deadlock still includes that old setup, but now defaults you to the dual sticks and gives you a Halo Combat Evolved style orientation sequence at the start so you can get to grips with this craziness. Two analog sticks at the same time? Nah, this, this ain't gonna catch on. Clank won't be propelling you through the air, but the harsh fixed flips Ratchet would pull when strafe jumping at certain angles before are gone. You get much more mid-air control, allowing for the third-person bullet hell to feel all the more fluid when you're hopping around and everything's coming at you. At first, it might seem kind of disappointing that the game has reduced the weapon count to only 10 instead of the 20-something these games usually have, but the way the arsenal has been streamlined, I actually find pretty cool. You can now buy status effect mods that can be switched out between weapons. So rather than have some lame sludge weapon in the game you never want to use, you can instead say buy the poison mod and slap it onto a gun you actually like. Ice, electricity, mini bombs, napalm, even a mod that makes enemies turn on each other can all be applied all over your arsenal. There's a real frantic nature to the combat here. Some of the enemies that attack you melee style are now a lot more serious. They ain't just little bug dudes that come hopping towards you. You've got zombies and these spike men that will straight up tear you to shreds. So some areas really have you on your toes as you're switching out weapons to deal with close targets while other dudes far away are shooting you. The game ramps up until by the end it's some of the most hectic combat in the series. Even the PS3 cell processor can't keep up with the madness in this 2005 PS2 game. The HUD in this game is really aesthetically pleasing. After ditching the CRT vibe of the first title, the games have struggled to find a visually appealing look for the heads-up display. But the one in Deadlocks looks slick, and hey, you can even change its color if you want the weird aberration that was the light orange design from 3 again. Furthermore, Ratchet's body language gets a more refined edge to it. Instead of appearing like he's a step away from T-posing his way through the game, he actually looks like he's ready for action this time around with his new battle stance. Turn on the extra unlockable to have him hold his blasters gangster style and we finally have a Ratchet who looks like he's pumped to use his sick arsenal. When it comes to edgy looking cartoon rats with guns, if Shadow the Hedgehog is your weird low budget telenovela crime drama, then Ratchet Deadlocked is Breaking Bad. And the music, oh baby, Deadlocked has one of the best soundtracks in the series. I'd say when it comes to raw beats, it may even rank as a near second to the first game, it's a close one with our boy too, but just listen to this banger goodness. Oh, 
All this comes together to create one sick as hell fist pumping thrill ride. The game offers you four difficulties from the start, and even when I got this game for Christmas 05 at the tender age of 11, I always cranked that shit up to max for the ultimate experience. This is how you know you're dealing with the Ratchet Master, what can I say? Trust me, it's the way to play. Now, I'm not just gonna sit back and ignore the fact that yes, because Deadlock decided to go with this arena structure much akin to 3, most of the level design is pretty piss. Most of them feel like multiplayer maps with a bunch of force fields put up around them to fake some kind of semblance of structure. None of these locations are ever gonna win prizes for feeling like expansive worlds to explore, but I mean, they're not super supposed to. Once you've uh, come to terms with the fact you're playing a game show that this is the shoot everything ratchet game, it's not so bad. You're not told, hey, time to go to Blackwater City, kids, except when you get there, this time it's just gonna be one floating platform we slapped on a lake. When Orkson comes back from the first game as just some big square factory looking thing here, but you know that's gonna be the case early on, it's less of a kick in the teeth. There's no pretension here, there's no corridor masquerading as the iconic Metropolis level. And some things are undoubtedly baller in the level design. Like, uh, grind rails are back, maybe? Absent from 3, they make their triumphant return here, and now with a dual analog stick setup, you can grind along while aiming your guns at passing enemies. Sick nasty. Shout out, though, to one of the most baffling pieces of level design I've seen in the entire series. So here, you could take the optional grind rail all the way around to get these extra bolts, or you could just, uh... <laughs> Do that, yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit awkward. The thing that tips Deadlocks over into the big leagues, though, what gets it my badass seal of approval, is the plot and themes the game tackles. Unlike Ratchet 3, which had a very confused satirical tone, Deadlocks returns to the quality of the first two games with some of the best, most focused satire in the series. Deadlocks puts a laser focus back on the self-absorbed consumerism and celebrity culture-obsessed nature of the Ratchet universe. Throughout the game, our boy Ratchet gets slandered fake news style by the people running the Vox News Network. Can you can you tell this was made in the mid 2000s? Who work for Gleam and Vox, the big multimedia mogul guy running Dreadzone. I love how they twist the events of previous games to suit their agenda. Vox News investigation has uncovered shocking untold stories from his dark, sinister, evil past. The destruction of civic property, illegal hoverby gangs inadequate dental hygiene. Ratchet is positioned as the scum of the earth to boost the profile of the arrogant ace hardlight, the number one player in Dreadzone. Cause there is one man that can put an end to this menace, Ace Hardlight. Ace Hardlight fans, prepare yourselves. I'm gonna make this one messy. So that Gleeman can sell all his merch that's stacking up in his office like Hidekazu Yukawa's Dreamcast stock and watch Shenmue. The hosts are constantly talking mad shit, trying to sway viewer opinion. They even speak over the gameplay as would be expected from a game modeled after TV sport tropes. He's a lombax. He spent time in prison. He hates candy and children. But unlike other games that will go unmentioned, even though it would make total sense for them to be doing so since they are literally providing live commentary, they actually don't speak every two seconds and there are moments of silence. It's, uh, it's remarkably restrained when you take into account what Ratchet would later become. Come and buy a pixelizer! So what we have here is a giant evil media conglomerate trying to sway opinion, and the best part is that Ratchet proves once and for all that it's all bullshit. Sales are down across the board except for fuzzy Lombax ears. Well, you've obviously made some sort of idiotic mistake! Ratchet's earnestness and actual heroism shines through all the crap. He gains fans anyway, rising to the top as the star. Whoa. We hate you, Ratchet. You cheated. Ratchet is a malicious criminal. He must be punished! It's not terribly realistic, it's not in-depth satire, but it's a positive story in an otherwise dark, edgy title, and works seamlessly with the setup of the game and overall themes of the whole series. Gleam and Vox is a great villain, and in a way, in fact, he's kind of the final boss of this entire franchise. And I'm not saying that because all the games after this had kind of dodgy stories, but I mean, you could make that argument. You know, I might be on board with that. It's because he represents everything wrong with this universe. The obsession with making money and gawkish celebrity idealization that's led this universe to the brink of destruction countless times before. And as Ratchet, you don't just kick his ass, but you decimate his cynical worldview. This was a universe where even heroes could be turned into products, but our hero, the outsider, incorruptible. Don't let Vox do to you what he did to me. <gasps> 
stands up and brings down an empire. We'll sell ratchet action figures, ratchet sports shoes, ratchet deodorant, ratchet breakfast cereal, earmuffs and cologne, soft drinks, hard drinks, energy drinks, breath mints. <laughs> you get record deals, movie rights, reality shows, video games, and commercials, 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 commercials. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and there's a, no deal, Vox. I think for some people it's easy to feel a bit disconnected from what's happening in Deadlock since a lot of it's told via news programs rather than a lot of interactions between Ratchet and other characters. But I think overall the notes this game's plot hits are really on point and a perfect climax to the PS2 saga. And more fitting than, say, the out of step wacky mad scientist comedy of Dr. Nefarious. And you know, heads up to you, Ratchet 3 boys, I'm not trying to say 3 is some kind of dumpster fire. If you like it more than Deadlock simply because it's still about Ratchet and Clank going about in their ship to different planets in their own time, that, that's fine, we're all friends here. The PS2 Ratchet games are the kind of games we don't see much of anymore, a great merge of comedy, satire, heart, platforming, shooting. In a way, this title is kind of the last of its era. As the game devs of the time longed to tackle more serious subject matter and more complex titles, what you could get away with pulling off both tonally and mechanically was being stretched to its limits in the cartoony mascot 3D platformer space. I mean, damn, Ratchet has frickin' ride and nail claws in this game. We're pushing things to the absolute edge. And while you can kind of see why a lot of companies move towards creating more mature, adult-looking IPs to expand their conceptual limits, I do kind of miss aspects of this era where eccentric space platformers got to hit us with all this biting social commentary and shooting action. Yeah, I mean, we can now all take seriously Nathan Drake's relationship drama because he's all realistic looking in that. But because he's a more realistic bloke with more realistic bloke abilities, jumping around has to be all slow and strict and climby and such. Remember Nathan Hale? He looked like a real human guy, very memorable. It's harder these days to find really gamey game experiences on a mechanical level that also offer interesting universes full of thematic weight and character depth. And I wouldn't totally class the Ratchet games that came after this one as successful in that regards either. Point is, outside of just being a good game, Deadlocked is also a really interesting point in time, which I think warrants a revisit. Don't be put off by the spin-off looking ass box art, Deadlocked is well worth changing the channel to.